Happy Sunday, FCBC. This is the day that the Lord has made. It is the first Sunday of 2022. 2022. And we praise God for this. We pray that your new year thus far has been amazing. That in just this short period of time, you've learned something. That you've grown a little bit. And today, we thank God for this. It is the first communion Sunday of the year. And here's what I want you to do today. I want you to build communion and community differently. Today, in the simple gesture of solidarity, I want you to make sure when this service is over that you call three people and tell them that you love them. As soon as the service is over today, call three people and make sure you tell them that you love them. Build community today based on love. A few quick announcements today. I want to remind you again that our MLK Day of Service, our quote drive, is on Saturday, January 15th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Please spread the word. You may know some people who may need a coat, an adult, a child, let them know that on the 15th of January from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., they can come to FCBC and get a coat. You can also direct them to fcbcnyc.org to get more info about what they need to do to get a coat on that day. For those of you who are making donations, please continue to make those donations of brand new coats or monetary donations, or you can check out our Amazon wish list on our FCBC website. Again, that's FC. B C N Y C dot org. And here's what we want you to make sure of, that all donations that you make directly to FCBC, whether they be monetary or coats or even through the Amazon wish list, that everything is here at FCBC by January the 8th. January the 8th. Also, we've had some amazing people sign up to be volunteers for that day. And Pastor Trey, who is over this event, who will be leading this event, uh, wants me to remind all the volunteers, if you're watching, all the volunteers who signed up, check your email. Sometimes we sign up and forget to check our email. Check your email. You'll get some announcements about important dates and opportunities as we lead up to January 15th. Listen. You know, beloved, that our theme for the year is I am ready. After our New Year's Eve service, uh, I got so many messages about people telling me, hashtag, Pastor, I am ready. I am ready. And so remember that. Now, as always, throughout the year, we have merchandise that accompanies our I Am Ready or our theme in general. And so we want to make sure you go on our website, on our shopping website. That's shop.fcbcnyc.org, shop.fcbcnyc.org, and you can pre-order the I Am Ready merchandise. We also have our bands. We'll tell you how you can come get those in the future. We have our I Am Ready bands. I got one on today. And so we want to make sure everyone walks around with that theme, our battle cry for the year of 2022 as a reminder that you are ready. Good. All right, beloved, no matter where you are watching today, no matter what part of the world you are in, stand to your feet. Unless for the first Sunday, the first Sunday of this new year, declare our statement of identity into the atmosphere. Come on, beloved, let's do that together. We are an ever-evolving community of visionaries, dreamers, and doers to live the lives we are created to live, commanded by God to love beyond the limits of our prejudices, and commissioned by God to serve. We are called to live, commanded to love, and commissioned to serve. And here at FCBC, we like to say, we live, we love, we serve. Amen, beloved. Listen, the first Sunday of a new year, I thought about what scripture I could refer to today for this Sunday. And, and many of you know my favorite person in scripture outside of Jesus is, is King David. And I wanted this morning to look at a verse from his storied life, the very beginning of his journey. I want to lift one verse found in 1 Samuel 16. 1 Samuel 16, 
verse 11. 1 Samuel 16, verse 11. No, actually, let me change that. I'm telling my people in the top. We want to do 1 Samuel 16, verses 10 and 11. I want to do that. Let's make that adjustment. Uh, 1 Samuel 16, 10 and 11. That's what I want to do today. Here's our reason in New Revised Standard Version. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all of your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Amen. Come on, beloved. Let's, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you, God. We are here. The dawning of a new year. A year, oh God, filled with possibilities. We know, oh God, challenges will come. That it will not necessarily be a smooth and easy road. But we have a battle cry this year. I am ready. God, we are ready for whatever comes our way in this season. Because, oh God, we know that you are with us every step of the way. And for that, oh God, we say thank you. Now, oh Lord, may the words that you declare on today the collective meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our strength. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. God, break into our hiding places today. Rescue us so that we can face this new day with boldness, with confidence with courage. Thank you, God. This is our prayer. In your name we pray. Amen. Listen, don't sit down yet, family. I know you're at home, but don't sit down yet. I want to read that scripture again. 1 Samuel 16, verses 10 and 11 in the New Revised Standard Version. And here's how it reads. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Amen, beloved. Listen, I want you to say this to yourself this morning. No matter where you are, here's what I want you to declare. I am ready for change and growth. Come on, say it again. I am ready for change and growth. Amen. Come on, I want you to give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there in your house right now. I am ready for change and growth. We begin this series on our theme today. I am ready. I am ready for change and growth. I want to begin this brief message today quoting from that great Apostle of rhythm and blues, George Benson. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. The young become the old. Mysteries do unfold because that's the way of time. Nothing and no one goes unchanged. There are not many things in life you can be sure of except rain comes from the clouds and sun lights up the sky and hummingbirds do fly. 
winter turns to spring, wounded heart will heal, never much too soon, everything must change. These lyrics remind us of the inevitability of change. In fact, there is no such thing as progress in life, in your life, without change. Gail Sheehy put it best. She said, if we don't change, we don't grow. And if we don't grow, we aren't really living. If we don't change, we don't grow. And if we don't grow, we aren't really living. It is as if change and growth go hand in hand. But here's the catch. Change is inevitable. Growth is a choice. There is no guarantee that you will grow just because things change. I'll say it again. Again, change is inevitable. But growth is a choice. You have no control of the moments that change the trajectory of your life. I said it in the video you saw before the sermon. We do not know those moments that will come at us. We don't know the time when God may even intrude upon the safe sanctuary of our comfort. We have no idea when God will try to do something different, when that moment will beckon you, when the universe will call you. We do not know when that will happen. But we do know that change is the constant. Things will change. Life will change. As George Benson said, nothing remains the same. But I want to always remind us that we do not know the moments where dramatic change will enter our lives and nothing will be like it was before. This scene is a testimony to that that I read this morning. I know in David's wildest dreams, he did not imagine life outside of the comfort and safety of his familiar home. I know David could not have imagined that somehow he would be swept into some cosmically significant moment that would require him to elevate to a place he could not even Imagine, no one really thinks in their mind when that time will come when God will step in and lift you to places that shatter your deepest imagination. For him, he was doing what he knew to do. He was simply going through the motions of being a shepherd, tending to his father's sheep. That was life as he knew it. He was the youngest one. That was what was, what was required. All of his brothers before him had the same responsibility. And when another son was born, they passed it down. When another son was born, they passed it down. David was the youngest, and he was doing what his brothers before him had done. They tended to the sheep. That was life. It was not a complex life. It was not a complicated life. It was not like how we live now with all of its complexities and distractions. Life was simple, and people lived and died in the quiet simplicity and comfort of a familiar life. Because sometimes, whether we like to admit it or not, we love the predictability of our days. We love to be able to know that on this day we'll do that and on this day we'll do that. We form patterns based on our comfort. We cannot stand patterns that disrupt it with inconvenience. In fact, we live in an age right now that is shaped by our addiction to convenience, whether we want to admit it or not. And that's what progress does. That's what technology does. It makes things more convenient. It makes life easier. But sometimes, if you're not careful, you can become addicted to the convenience and you never push yourself. You never challenge yourself. You don't imagine being more than what you know. Oh, gosh, David knew that. He knew that feeling of the quiet simplicity of a comfortable life. I'm going to say it again. The quiet simplicity of a comfort life that lacks inconvenience. That is what many of us long for. The quiet simplicity of a comfortable life. And we resent, reject, and some may even rebel against inconvenience. But what if the inconvenience is not something you initiate? What if the inconvenience is because something bigger than you requires you? 
What happens in that moment when you find yourself being beckoned by God, called by the universe to do something that transcends your desire for simple comfort and inconvenience? I got to tell you that if you keep walking and living this life with God, whether you want to admit it or not, there will come a moment where God's divine intrusion will show up at your doorstep in your life and nothing about your life will ever remain the same again. You can't time it. You can't calculate it. You don't know when it will happen. But when it happens, here's the question. Will you be ready? Because it is inevitable. The change will come. I often have imagined this scene in my mind where David was in the pastures tending to the sheep and he knew there was some commotion going on at the house, but that was not any of his business. I remember when I was a child, we used to hear that old adage that a child, children should be silent, that we ought to keep our place, not heard, mind our business, or how we really say it, stay out of grown folk business. And David was probably doing that. He knew that his father and his brothers were up at the house, maybe even knew that the prophet Samuel had come, but he was remaining focused on his duty, focused on his assignment, focused on his word, until everything shifted in a moment. And it came from a familiar request, David, come here. That's what Jesse might have said. David, come here. David, mind me, drops his things. He makes his way from the sheep in the pasture to his father's house, not knowing that a, a directive had been given by the prophet. Because before David was summoned, the prophet Samuel asked Jesse, David's father, are these all your sons? He had paraded seven sons before Samuel, waiting for the next one who would be anointed king. We know the story. And Jesse tells Samuel, well, there's one, he's, I like one, one translation, Message Bible. It says, he's the runt of the litter. Oh, my God. He's the most overlooked of the lot. And here it is. The prophet Samuel tells Jesse, go get him. We will not sit down until he comes. I don't want to stay here long, but, but sometimes we have no idea whose life is in a holding pattern until you answer the call. We have no ideas at times whose lives are on hold, on pause, waiting for you to answer the high calling that God has placed upon your life. Why? Because it is bigger than you. There are tentacles to your calling, tentacles to your beckoning, tentacles to your being summoned that are outside of you. And you never know who is waiting, what part of creation is waiting for you to say yes. Well, let me back up because sometimes creation is not waiting for you to say yes. Creation may just be waiting for you to be obedient to the call when it comes. Jesse says, David, come to the house. And thus begins the change in David's life. Simple requests at a God-filled moment. Routine that is not out of the ordinary in an extraordinary moment. And change enters David's life. The truth is, whether we like to admit it or not, many of us resist change. I can tell you that for a fact. Many of us resist change. We work hard to build stability. We work hard to reinforce our comforts. We are committed in ways we can't always comprehend to maintaining the simplicity and the familiarity of a life we've constructed. Some of us have worked hard to build that which is manageable. 
We've given ourselves. We've given our toil and our, and our sweat and our tears, not always to do the extraordinary, but to just create a habitat in the ordinariness of life that does not disrupt our comfort. We don't always like to admit that. We don't always like to say that that's how we've lived our lives. We don't always like to admit that we actually have been laboring and working for comfort. That we have been toiling and sweating for simplicity. No one likes to directly admit that, but that is the truth. And if many of us are honest this day, we can say, well, there, Pastor, that is the truth. That I've been laboring, I've been working, not just for simplicity and comfort, but for convenience and every now and again, in the midst of our simplicity, our comfort, our convenience, if we can slip a little luxury in there, we'll feel all right. But the truth is, life is not always about simplicity and comfort. Can I really blow your mind? Here's the truth. Growth and comfort do not coexist. Oh, you need to hear that. Growth and comfort do not always coexist. Why? Because growth is the byproduct of change if you let it. If you lean into the change, you'll find out that growth is inevitable, but only if you lean in to change and not be afraid of it, not, not try to resist it, not, not try to go against it. I love what Narayana Murthy said, growth is painful. Change is painful, but nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere you don't belong. Growth is painful. Change is painful, but nothing is as painful as staying stuck in a place you do not belong. I hope I'm speaking to somebody today. I'm going to say it again. Growth is painful. Change is painful. But nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere you do not belong. Oh, beloved, I know the feeling. And you may know the feeling. It gnaws at the very fabric of our sanity at times. That feeling of being stuck somewhere you don't belong. And in our rational minds, something in us says, why stay somewhere you know you don't belong? But then fear rises and tells you you can't make it outside of those places. You can't thrive. You can't survive. You won't do well. You become hesitant. You, you rather backtrack into that familiar space even though you know it is the place you no longer belong. And it doesn't mean that it didn't belong or you didn't feel like you belonged at some point. But here's what life says and here's what change says. Change says that at different seasons in your life you will outgrow certain spaces. It's inevitable. I remember, I remember, I remember as a child, and, and all of us have this, especially those of us who have young children now. We go shopping for children. And, and here's what you do. In order to beat the inevitability of the growth of your child, you'll try to get clothes maybe a size too big. And the desire to get clothes a little big is not for them, it's for you because you are trying to save. And so you try to outpace the inevitable. Oh, I hope you hear that. You try to outpace what is inevitable. Here it is. I know, I know he wears a size five, but let me get the six because I don't want to have to go shopping again. Because here it is, which you also know is that change can be costly. And so here it is. You're trying to outpace, but here it is. The growth will always outpace your ingenuity. And then pretty soon, the thing you thought was big that would last a little bit longer, you couldn't calculate. What you could calculate is the cost. You could calculate your expense, but you could not calculate your child's growth. And then, all of a sudden, it gets to a point that your child outgrows even the garments you tried to outpace their growth with. And now you're left with clothes that are no longer relevant for the child because what? They've outgrown them. How? 
many garments you've been trying to get into because you've been afraid to change. How many spaces you've been trying to contort your body to squeeze back into knowing that you had outgrown that space because it will come a point where the cycles are too painful and the misery is mounting and the hurt is a hurdle you no longer want to leap over. Something must change. I have no idea what David's life was like. But I speak about those of us now who know what it means to get to a point in your life where you know change is painful, you know the growth is painful, but it is more painful to be somewhere you no longer belong. That agonizing, excruciating pain that comes with having to disconnect and depart from spaces that now have become dangerous, not because they were always dangerous, but because you no longer belong there. It is not dangerous to the space. It is dangerous to your life. Because something has to give. Abraham Maslow said it this, in any given moment, we have two options to step forward into growth or step back into safety. At any given moment, we have two options. Step forward into growth or step back into safety. That's what lies before us at the dawning of this new year. And you have to use your battle cry. I am ready for change and growth. Remember, the first part, inevitable. The second part means you must commit, intentional, about leaning into the change. Because only when you lean in will the growth then come about. I know it will be easy to resist. I know it's easy to rebel. But remember what I said earlier. The pain of change and the pain of growth does not compare to the pain of being somewhere you don't belong. That pain assaults you every moment of your life. That pain keeps you up at night. That pain keeps you restless. That pain makes you bitter. That pain makes you resentful. That pain makes you angry. That pain can push you into depression. That pain can give birth to anxiety. That pain can be breaking. To be in a place that you no longer belong. And it may not even be that you've outgrown it. It may just mean you are no longer relevant to that space. And it is time to move on. This morning, on this first Sunday of the year, are you ready for change and growth? Are you ready? change and growth. We all say it. We all say we want to grow. We want to be better. But know that growth and being better and even being more prosperous is connected to change. And change is not always painless. You cannot manipulate it can't circumvent it. It is what it is. The only thing you have to wrestle through is am I ready for it? How are you ready? Look at David's example as a young boy. When he heard the call, he just came forward. He didn't know why his father was calling him. He didn't know that the prophet was ready to anoint him. He didn't know that that anointing would make him king. He didn't know any of these things. When he heard the call, when he felt the call, he just responded and moved forward. Maybe that's what is required of you in this season. 
doesn't mean that you stay back and try to assess it. Because here's what I know for a fact. We know when we hear the sound of God's presence and voice. You know what it feels like when soul language resonates with your spirit. And that's not the moment to sit back and say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, God. How do I know this is you? know, you know. I posted something a few days the last day of the year. I said, don't be so desperate that you're no longer discerning, but you know what it sounds like to hear the voice of God and presence of God. And when that moment of great change that changes the trajectory of your life beckons you, lean into it. Lean into it. Because the truth is, I know we say it so much, the truth is, the best is yet to come. We don't always feel that when we're going through that contorting phase of transformation. We don't always sense it when we're dealing with the pain of change and growth. But beloved, I got to tell you, for you today, the best is yet And how does that begin? With your valiant and courageous declaration of preparedness. I am ready for change and growth. I am ready for change and growth. I am ready for change. And growth. Beloved, do me a favor. Just lean in. Let's talk to God this morning. And as we prepare to pray, in your spirit, raise your fears before God. Because the truth is, those fears are things that prevent us from leaning in to growth, leaning in to change. Raise those fears before God. Not saying God change them, but so that you're no longer afraid of them. Give voice to them, but now use your power to transcend. You know what your fears are. You know the things that are holding you back from doing the thing you need to do to elevate in this season. Because you may be somewhere you don't belong. You may be in a space right now that's too small for you, and you're fighting for the beautiful comfort of your simplicity. Come on, beloved, let's talk to the Lord. God, we thank you today, and we honor you today. And we are grateful for how you continue to remind us that we ought not be afraid of seasons of change and growth. God, you know our fears are real. Our trepidations are real. But God, we are reminded that you are bigger than our fears. And not only are you bigger than our fears, but God, we are bigger than our fears. We are not the sum total of all that frightens us. We are strong, we are courageous, we are brave. And in this season, we will activate our courage, activate our bravery, and we will prepare for this season of change and growth by being open and move forward. Open and move forward. Open, God, and move forward. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this gentle and beautiful reminder. And God, in this season, we will be intentional about accepting change and leaning into growth. We love you, Lord. We thank you, God. This is our prayer. In your name we pray. And we say, Amen. Amen.